Now that we have the UI ready, we are able to hit convert kit endpoint and get the subscription or subscribe the user to the email list, get the subscription back. And for that, we will use API route. And in Next.js, what API route is, is any file inside of the pages slash API folder will run as a server side function. So it doesn't run on the client, doesn't run in the browser, runs behind the scenes on the server where we can make the request to convert kit nice and safe because of the API key and whatever comes back, we can send it back to the front end and update the UI. Okay, so this is the simple example of one of the API routes. And if we go back to our code, you'll see that there is already hello.js inside of the pages and API folder. And if we visit that in a browser in our app and go slash API slash hello, we would get this JSON object name John Doe, and that's the response from this endpoint. Okay, so the name of the file relates to the URL, so API slash hello gives us this response, and we will create a new endpoint. We will call it subscribe.js, and we'll write our serverless function over here. Before we write the server-side piece of this implementation, let's go back to the UI close the hello and in the form, we want to create the subscribe async function that will run when we submit the form. So create a new constant subscribe. This will be async await function because we need to wait for the response and inside of it, we'll get the response. We create a response object and we'll fetch the API endpoint. Okay, so the URL as we've previously discussed is slash API slash the file name, in our case, subscribe. And we will pass the email as a query parameter. So question mark email, and we'll get the email variable and pass it to this subscribe function. Let's destructure it. We'll get the email from the data. And now we will go to the on submit function and change it instead of console log, we will pass in the full data, so full object, and that will then destructure the email from this object and pass it to the API endpoint. Okay, so this should send it to the API. Now we can go to the subscribe.js, create export default function, which will take the request and response. And inside of it, we'll simply console log. We want to get the email, just making sure we're talking to this API endpoint in the right way and we'll get the email from the request query and then we'll just console log it. Okay, so this is just validating. We're hitting that endpoint, we're passing the email and we are ready to hit convert kit. Okay, so this should work when we save it. Let's save the file and validate it in a browser. We will fill in an email in the input and when we submit it now, we don't see any console log inside of the Chrome console, but we see it inside of the VS Code terminal. Okay, so that's just a sign that this function runs on the server. So the console log is happening on the server as well. And that's how we're passing the data from the form through the fetch call to the API endpoint. If we go back to the subscribe and console log the whole request object, that will console log much more information. And if we just search for query, you'll see that here is the query with the email and the value from the form. Okay, so that's the data we need to pass to ConvertKit API. And before we start implementing the try catch and hitting ConvertKit, let's make sure that we are returning an error if we don't pass the email to this endpoint. Okay, so we'll check if the email exists and if it doesn't, we'll return a status of 400 and the status is a cool helper from the next endpoint. So rest status, JSON, send, or redirect that they are helper tools from next. So we can return status 400 and a custom error message inside of the JSON. We'll create an object error and we'll set the error to just something that makes more sense. So email is required. Okay, so if we try to hit this endpoint without an email,
that's what the endpoint would return. To test this, we can save it, go to the sign up form and don't pass it the query parameter. We will remove it, we will not send it, we will try to hit it just with the subscribe and we want to make sure it actually returns these 400 status and the error. Okay, so let's go back to the form, try to put some email and open the console. We should see the four, we should see the network error. Let's go type in any email, doesn't really matter what the email is, we will not hit convert kit. And if we hit subscribe, we see the endpoint returning bad request 400. And inside of it, we have the error. Oops, I need to make it a little bit wider. Here is the custom error email is required. Okay, so that's what the catch is. That's what the, if email doesn't exist, that's what the response is. And now let's recap what we've done in this video. We've changed the on submit function to take the data, pass it to a subscribe async function that then destructures email from the data and passes it to the subscribe endpoint as a query. Then we've created the subscribe endpoint. We're getting the email from the re request query and then we're checking if the email exists. If it doesn't, we returning the 400 error and a custom error message. And in the next video, we will create the rest of the function where we will be hitting the convert kit endpoint and dealing with the response from them.